Hi everybody, welcome to Pilates class. I've prepared a basic class for you today. There are a few variations that will be more challenging, but uh, in general, this is a basic class. I hope you enjoy. So start lying on your back with your knees bent, feet flat on the floor, arms along your body, ankles and knees hip distance apart, pelvis and shoulder blades heavy on the mat and the back of the neck long. Taking a few breaths here to start activating through the core. So breathing in, feel your rib cage expanding in all different directions. On the breath out, we start lifting the pelvic floor and gently contracting your deep abdominals. So now we're going to some pelvic tilts using those deep abdominals to move the pelvis for you. So as you breathe in, let your pelvis roll forward so your tailbone comes closer to the mat and your lower back gently arches. On the breath out, we roll the pelvis back so your lower back lengthens on the mat and your pubic bone comes closer to the belly button. So we continue with about five repetitions each way. And then we pause where your pelvis feels neutral. Bent knee opening. So allow one leg to fall to the side. Then we use the inner thigh and the pelvic floor to bring the leg back to the starting position. As one leg moves, we do our best to keep the rest of the body still. So it's that disassociation of one leg in relation to the rest of the body. You can also imagine that you had a zip going from the tailbone all the way to the belly button. And as the leg goes back up to the starting position, we're zipping up. So you continue with about three or four repetitions each side. Then we get ready for dead bugs. As you breathe in, we float one leg up into 90, 90 degrees. And as you breathe out, we bring the leg back to the starting position, alternating sides. So as the legs move, we want to keep the rest of the body still. So you use your core to help you with that. We also want to have the image of the head of the thigh bone rolling deep in the hip socket. So we use those deep hip flexors together with the core. And also notice that my knee doesn't change angle. So the movement happens purely in the hip joint. We're gonna add to this now. So next time you float your right leg up into 90, 90 degrees, keep it there, firm your tummy, the left leg comes up to meet, then we lower the right, then we lower the left. I'm gonna give you a breath for this now. So next time you float your left leg, we inhale, exhale, float the right, then inhale, lower the left, exhale lower the right we're going to continue with a few more always starting with the last leg to move remember to keep your core engaged and use your breath then you can take that into some toe taps so next time both legs are up in the air we're going to exhale and lower the right toes down towards the mat then inhale as you float it back up so you don't need to necessarily touch the mat. You only need to lower the leg as low as you can control. And then you can continue alternating sides. And also notice that my knee doesn't change angle. So the movement stays in the hip joint. So you can imagine as if you had a little strawberry behind your knee that you don't want to squeeze and you don't want to let it go. If this is enough for you, you can continue alternating. Or if you want to, we can try doubles. So now both legs are going to lower down on the exhale. Inhale as they come back up. So have in mind that when you're doing doubles, you might not be able to go as far compared to when you were alternating legs, just because it's more load on your core. You can do about four or five repetitions. And then once you're finished, you can hug your knees towards your chest. You can also rock your lower back on the mat and circle. It feels good and it helps to release. So then we set ourselves up for bridging. So your feet go back on the mat, arms along your body, only enough knee flexion so we can bridge. On the breath out, we curl the pelvis back, pressing through the heels, the pelvis floats. Then one bone at a time, of your spine follows all the way so you have a straight line from the knees to the shoulders. Breathe in at the top and as you breathe out, we lower the body, starting from the upper back through the lower back lasting the pelvis. We continue with a few more of those, aiming to have as much movement through each segment of the spine as possible. So now we can add to this. Next time you bridge up, we can breathe in and reach your arms up and overhead. Leaving the arms there, we lower the body down, enjoying the extra stretch you get. Then inhales, the arms come back to the starting position. So we bridge up one more time. Once at the top, breathe in, the arms reach up and overhead. Leave the arms there, we lower the spine down. Then we bring the arms back on the inhale. 
then two more of those so we bridge up all the way and then we arc the arms up and overhead reaching your fingertips away from your heels you lower the body down and then on the inhale we bring the arms back and now you're going to some chest lift so interlock your fingers have your hands behind your head elbows at peripheral vision we create the imprint through the spine on the exhale we curl up panic and shoulders sliding the ribs down navel draws in towards the spine inhale through the back and sides of the ribs and then exhale we lower the body down and as we continue with a few more we want to make sure that we keep the head heavy on your hands so you're not pulling your head forward putting too much pressure on the neck we want to use your deep abdominals as well as your upper abdominals to move the upper body for you so now we're going to add to these so next time you curl up we're gonna inhale and reach your hands behind your thighs use your hands to curl up a little bit deeper inhale the arms return behind your head exhale we lower down let's go with a few more so exhale we curl inhale arc the arms exhale see if you can curl up a little bit higher maintaining the height the arms return then exhale we lower last time exhale curl up inhale we arc the arms exhale use the arms to curl up higher maintain the height inhale the arms return behind your head then exhale we lower everything down so we're doing obliques now so exhale curl inhale pause exhale rotate left ribs towards right knee inhale back into center exhale rotate to the other side back into center then lower everything down so we want to make sure that you're rotating the rib cage so not your arms or your shoulders so you're rotating the thoracic spine using your obliques as well as your deep core your lower back and your pelvis are glued to the mat so only the upper body moving the lower body stays still so you can continue with two more of this sequence or two more on each side so really aiming the rib towards opposite knee so you can imagine as if you had a magnet on your knee pulling your opposite ribs towards it so that really helps and the other thing is uh, your gaze so looking towards the opposite knee or just at the outside of it We're gonna get ready for assisted roll up now. So one at a time, the legs float up into 90 to 90 degrees. Your hands go behind your thighs and already feel your thighs pressing against your hands and your hands against your thighs. On the exhale, we curl up panic and shoulders. The feet reach towards the mat and we peel the spine off the mat one bound at a time. When your shoulders are over the hips, we inhale and restack the spine tall from the bottom to the top. On the exhale, we curl the pelvis back, scoop through the belly allowing one bone at a time of your spine to return to the mat and the last thing is your head we want to make the roll down really slow because that will give you the strength to roll up it's important to keep the head neck and shoulders organization as well so keep your shoulders nice and wide and the shoulders away from the ears once you complete about four or five of them we can go into the full roll up but if you think the assisted version is the best for your body today, please stay with that. Practicing the assisted version will lead you to the full roll up. Another thing that will help you is to think of letting the weight of your legs to bring you up into sitting. The legs are active working together with the core to lift you up. For the full roll up, next time your spine is on the mat, we can stretch the legs out and arc your arms up and overhead. On the exhale, we reach your fingertips to the ceiling, inhale, curl, head, neck and shoulders up and continue exhaling all the air as you peel the spine off the mat, curling all the way up. Again, once your shoulders are over the hips, we inhale and restack the spine tall. And on the exhale, we curl the pelvis back again, scooping through the belly we lower the spine down allowing each vertebra one at a time to find the mat once your head touched down we arc the arms up and overhead and we start again a good image for that is as if you're peeling a can of tuna open 
or stay seated for spine twist now. So sit it nice and tall on top of your sitting bones, ribs over the pelvis. You can bend your knees if you need to. Your arms are out to the sides at peripheral vision. On the exhale, we rotate the thoracic spine. In as you come back into center, rotating to the other side. Exhale as you do so. Inhale, come back. So as you move through your upper body, we want to keep your lower body still so your legs shouldn't move and your sitting bones are glued to the mat. We're going to add one breath on the next one. So we're going to exhale and rotate. Inhale, pause. Exhale, rotate a bit further. Inhale, come back into center. So exhale, rotate to the other side. Inhale, pause. Exhale, rotate a bit further. Inhale, come back into center. So you're going to cross your legs, send your arms forward, reach your legs back and lie down onto your belly for some upper back work. One hand on top of the other, rest your forehead on top of your hands. You can wiggle your legs back to find extra length. Your pubic bone is heavy on the mat and your abdominals engaged. On the inhale, we're going to draw the shoulder blades down and feel how that peels your head and your chest off the mat until the bottom ribs are still touching the mat. Exhale as you lower the body down. We want to maintain the back of the neck long and your lower back as relaxed as you can. So keeping the abdominals engaged helps with that. We want to think of uh, as you draw the shoulder blades down, you feel that your heart is shining forward. So working on the upper back extensors while working to keep the rest of the body still. If you want to this time, you can glue your hands on your forehead and bring them together so as you exhale this time we're gonna lift head and chest together with the arms in at the top and exhale we lower everything down so have in mind that once you bring your arms together you might not be able to go as high because it's more load on your back So you're going to slide your arms along your body now with the palms facing up, getting ready for that. Balancing the tip of your nose on the mat, on the inhale, you're going to peel your head and your chest off the mat. Your fingertips reach towards your heels and you lift your arms together. Exhale as you lower everything down. You should feel the energy on the back of the armpits and on the back of the arms to lift your arms together with the muscles of your upper back. On the next one, you're going to add 10 arm pumps while keeping your upper back lifted and still. So breathe in, lift your head and chest together with the arms. And every time you exhale, you pump your arms towards the ceiling. So using the back of the arms and feeling the energy through underneath your armpits. We want about 10 pumps all together. And once you're finished, you can have your hands under your shoulders and press yourself back into child's pose. Sitting back into your heels, taking a few breaths there to settle onto the stretch. We're gonna do some side work now. So lying onto your sides with your knees bent, your heels are in line with the hips, shoulders and head. Your bottom arm is bent supporting your head. Your hips and shoulders are stacked and your top arm is in front of you. Maintaining your gaze at your top arm, we're gonna create an arc, sending your top arm up and around, spiraling through your upper back. We do that on the exhale. We inhale and set onto the stretch and on the exhale, so again we bring the arm up and around back to the starting position your top waist is long and your hips shouldn't move much at all the focus here is the rotation of your thoracic spine as you start creating the arc from the moment that your fingertips are pointing to the ceiling onwards that's when the thoracic spine starts to spiral we're getting ready for some side line now. So bending the top arm, your top hand is in front of your for support. On the exhale, we lift the top leg up, maintaining the ankle in line with the knee and the hip. Inhale as you bring the leg forward, moving from the hip joint. Exhale as you send the leg back. So the breath really helps with this exercise. Inhaling as your leg comes forward, that helps so your lower back doesn't flex. And as you exhale and send the leg back that helps so your lower back doesn't arch we're gonna add to these now so next time your leg comes forward we can extend the knee flex your foot in as we send the leg back once your leg is back we bend the knee and bring the leg forward so a bicycle motion with the top leg 
And now next time your leg comes forward, we're gonna internally rotate the hip so your toes are pointing down and your heel is pointing up. And you're gonna lift and lower your top leg 10 times. Every time you exhale, you lift the leg up. But now you should be feeling on your bottom. So at the end of the 10 repetitions, if you want to, you can tap your bottom if you like to, it helps. And then we bring yourselves up into sitting position and have a bit of a stretch. So we're gonna extend the leg that you had at the bottom and the other leg, we're gonna bring the ankle on the outside of the bottom knee. Then with your opposite hand, you hold the knee and use your hand to lift your body up, aim the hip that you're stretching down and rotate your thoracic spine a little bit. You should be feeling a deep stretch on your bottom and you should hold that stretch for about 10 breaths. Notice how my bottom leg is bent. So you have the option of bending the bottom leg as well that will make the stretch stronger then we lie on the other side setting up for book opening so remember your shoulders and hips are stacked and if you had a wall behind you your feet hips shoulders and head will be touching that wall we create the biggest arc we can possibly have with your top arm allow your thoracic spine to rotate by keeping your hips steady You may also notice that you get more and more rotation with every repetition. You can also notice that one side is easier than the other. That's very common. And then we're going to some side lying, bending the top arm. Your top hand is in front of you. And you can also extend your bottom arm and lie on top of it. So it's a different variation to your bottom arm compared to the other side. Your top leg comes up parallel to the floor. Remember to keep the ankle in line with the knee and the hip and your top waist long. So the tendency, especially when the leg comes forward, is to shorten the top waist. Remember to use your breath and do your best to keep the top waist long throughout the whole exercise. And then you can start bicycling the top leg, extending the knee when the leg comes forward, flexing the foot, the leg reaches back, then you bend the knee and bring the leg forward. So as the leg goes back, remember to keep your core engaged and use the back of the top leg to, to bring the leg back. So we're using the hip extensors. And then we start lifting and lowering the top leg on the exhale. So we only need to lift the leg as high as you're not shortening the top waist. So it's not how high the leg goes, it's how much you can maintain the rest of the body in that same position. And then we come up to sitting for a stretch. So the bottom leg can be extended or bent. Then we bring the top leg across, bringing the ankle on the outside of the bottom knee, holding the knee with your opposite arm, lifting your body up, aiming the hip that you're stretching down and rotating your upper back. We want to hold the stretch for about 10 breaths, which is about 30 seconds at least. And then you're going to our final exercise, which is a very fun exercise, rolling like a ball. Coming towards the end of your mats, then you can have your hands in front of your shins, one on top of each other. And then we make our bodies in the shape of a ball. So your spine is on a C curve from the tailbone all the way to your head. Your shoulders are away from your ears. Your abdominals are engaged, pulling away from your legs. And you'll be looking towards the top of your knees. See if you can find your balance just behind your sitting bones. Then you can lift your feet up. On the inhale, we roll through your shoulder blades and as you exhale, we roll up to the starting position. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget that you can send us your feedback. So let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you. Bye.